Hi there folks, this is Matthew Seville with SLRLounge.com and in this video today we are going to merge two exposures to create a very simple HDR effect. And what I'm talking about is here in this image you can see I've got a lot of bright areas. I've got this beautiful sunrise with the rays of sun coming through and then I've got deep shadows here in the forest. Now, uh, if you zoom in, you can see that I've got pretty good detail, you know, even here in the shadows and, and pretty good detail in the highlights. And while, of course, probably uh, the latest and greatest cameras today could capture that no problem in one click, uh, I've got this, this photo is from 2005 and it was taken on a Nikon D70. So uh, the, the shadow image quality isn't the greatest, you know, so I wanted to merge two exposures these two shots here, let's uh, look at them uh, together. And if you look at them like this, you can see this shot here is actually pretty close to the final result. If I, if I bring it up here, you can see that uh, this actually doesn't look much different at all. So why am I doing an HDR in the first place? Well, again, let's look at the shadows on this particular image here. And you can see that they're just getting really mushy uh, because of the shadow detail is not not really that good in this older camera. So what I'm going to do is I've got this brighter exposure here that was taken at a tenth of a second f11 and ISO 200 and I've got this darker exposure here that was a 45th of a second f11 and ISO 200 and I'm just going to merge them all so that uh, I, I use the foreground from this shot and then I use the sky from this shot and then it produces this shot here. So let's go into the develop module by hitting D and I'm going to bring up the SLR Lounge uh, preset system and you can see I've got uh, all my import here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero these ones out. Let me uh, unclick the PSD there. So now I've got the, the brighter exposure and the darker exposure. And there's some editing applied, so let me zero those out. So you can see, this is what the dark exposure looks like, and this is what the bright exposure looks like. And my goal in all of this is to arrive at this final result here. So basically, I'm going to process the bright exposure so that the foreground is, is perfect, and then I'm going to process the dark exposure so that the sky and everything is perfect. Plus, another thing I want to think about is, since this is a simple merge, these two tonalities here need to match as much as possible. So when I process these two images, I'm going to brighten up the shadows on this one, even though they're going to be trash, and I'm going to darken the highlights on this one, even though they're going to be clipped. So let's get into it. I'm going to start with this bright exposure and process for the foreground here. I'm going to start with my Vivid Landscape standard color. And I like where this is taking me, but let's just go straight to Vivid uh, HDR Max and see what that does. Okay, so this is too bright, but most likely all I need to do is drop it down and darken it a little bit. So I'm just going to go right there. That looks great right there like this. Um, so maybe just a little bit fine fine tuning, brighten it up a little bit, maybe uh, right about there. I like that. So, so now I've got all of my settings here maxed out. Um, uh, oh, I need some uh, vibrance. Let's try some vibrance. Looks good. So I'm liking how this looks in the foreground here. Maybe just to get a little bit more pop, I'm going to bump up the clarity a little bit more. Let's zoom in just to see how things are looking. Uh, looks good, looks good. Uh, just, to, just to be on the safe side, since this is an older lens, I'm going to go into my lens correction and click my chromatic aberration tool. Uh, just to get rid of any colors, funky colors here in the corner in these twigs. Okay, so now that I have this uh, exposure for the foreground process, I'm going to go over here to the exposure for the sky, and I'm going to go straight to my uh, Vivid Landscape Mixology for HDR Max, and I like that right off the bat. But remember, I need this foreground area to match this, so I'm going to be going back and forth from shot to shot a lot. So from the looks of it, I think I need to brighten up the whole image overall. So basically, uh, maybe about somewhere around there looks good, but I don't want these to get too bright because it'll blow out, and I've already got my whites and highlights at negative 100. So, and, and of course, uh, let's kick some vibrance in. Yummy vibrance, popping colors. So from here, to get uh, this, I, like, I love this, but I need this to just kind of be a little bit brighter so that 
I can blend it perfectly with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, hit it with a brush. Let's hit K to go to the brush tool. And I'm just going to do a dodge, uh, brighten one stop from our uh, preset system. And I'm just going to hit it like that. Okay, so that almost matches right there. Maybe it's a little bit too bright now. So I'm just going to uh, click on it and then drag it to the left to turn it down. And as you can see, it, it's turning down like that. So I'm just throttling it back like that. That looks good. Now that's almost a perfect match. But I've got highlights preserved and I've got much better foreground detail. So the only thing left to do is to take these two images into Photoshop. So I'm going to control or command click on the on this one so that I get both of them. And then I'm going to hit control or command E to bring it into Photoshop. And let's load up Photoshop here. There, that's that. Now I've got both of these here. I've got the two layers. And as you can see there, the, the clouds slightly moved from between one shot and the other shot, but uh, that's okay. So anyways, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna layer them. I, what I should have done is, uh, in Lightroom, I should have done uh, right click and then do edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. But since I forgot to do that, I'm just gonna do command or control A, control C, control W, uh, I'm going to hit my left arrow and then hit enter for no because I don't want to save it. And then I'm just going to hit control or command V to paste that. It's really quick if you just do it uh, without talking about it like I am to you guys now. Just control A, control C, control W, control V. So anyways, here we go. Now I've got these two layers. I'm just going to create a mask. I'm going to hit B for brush. And then I'm going to hit my right bracket to make that brush large. I'm going to check my uh, brushes here, my, my colors, get that to black. And then while I'm holding down shift, I'm just going to uh, bracket so that the, uh, the brush feather gets uh, as delicate as possible. So then I can just go over it like this, nice and easy, and boom, there we go. Uh, I'm going to zoom in. I set my scroll, my mouse scroll wheel to, to do zooming, uh, which we can talk about uh, in another video probably. But uh, I'm zooming in like, like this. And I'm just going to hit X to change my, uh, my brushes, uh, to switch my brushes so that I get the... You can see how there was that, uh, that the noise from those old shadows. And I'm just kind of bringing back the, uh, the, good, the good quality, uh, image quality detail here. And just painting it across. And unfortunately, this is going to, when I zoom back out, this is going to look a little bit fake. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my right bracket again to make this brush a little bit bigger again. I'm going to hit X again so that I'm going back to painting over it. Oh, I'm going to hit con Command or Control Z uh, to undo that. And that basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over it once with my flow turned way down, I'm just clicking and dragging that, so that it just gives it a little bit more of a gentle, uh, realistic look. So right about there like that. So yeah, there's still going to be a little bit of noise in there. and that. It's just something I'm going to have to uh, kind of fine tune a little bit. I can, you know, get rid of it here and there. I actually kind of like the brighter exposure uh, for the sun because it, it makes the sun seem a little bit brighter. But anyways, that's about it. I could go over it once like that just to kind of, uh, or you can you can brush it a little bit to make it brighter, you know, to kind of blend in that direction. But I don't I don't I don't want to do that because my clouds moved. So anyways. That's good right there. So I'm just going to hit Control or Command S to save it. Uh, Control W to close it. And it'll close after it's done saving. And then I'm just going to Alt Tab back to Lightroom. And where's my picture? There it is. There's the final shot. And as you can see, it pretty much matches the, uh, the other PSD that I was originally showing you guys. From here, I could do a few tweaks. Let's see, uh, this image, uh, I'm usually, once I bring a PSD back or a TIFF back into Lightroom, I usually just bump up the, bump down the blacks a little bit to kind of give it that final bit of pop, and then maybe do a tiny bit of final color correction, you know, if I want it to be more pink or less, or less, uh, whatever, um, and then that's about it. So, I love it right about there, and let me hit L so I can darken it. And there we go. That is the quick and dirty way to merge two shots with an easy uh, transition between the two. Uh, processing one image for the, the foreground and one image for the sky. And there you go. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. All right, take care.